Now let's talk about the principal blood buffer, which is carbonic acid and bicarbonate ion. And there are a number of reasons why this is a good buffer for blood. One of them, though, is the fact of how it relates to uh, what the blood is likely to run into as a challenge for a strong acid or strong base. Um, so we're talking about a buffer. We need to know the pH, uh, or we have the pH of human blood at 7.4, and we're going to calculate the ratio of conjugate weak base to weak acid in blood for this buffer. So uh, let's start by looking up the Ka value for carbonic acid. That's going to be 4.3 times 10 to the minus 7. And pKa for that, 4.3 exponent 7 minus on my calculator. Log, I get 6.37. And in a calculation very similar to what we did on the previous slide, we're going to say that pH equals pKa plus the log of conjugate weak base to weak acid. And I'm just going to write it like that. It could be moles. It could be um, molarity as well. There's the same solution. So those two are going to be uh, very much related to each other. So we have our pKa of 6.37. We know the blood has a pH right around 7.4, 7.40. I'm going to add that. And then We don't know our ratio yet. Similar to something that we did before though, we can subtract 6.37 from both sides. Hold on. Oh, we haven't, so, so we haven't done this yet. <laughs> this is my second recording of the video. We were about to, but we're going to now solve for this ratio and we're going to then isolate it by subtracting. We'll do this again on the next slide. And then to cancel our log, we'll take the 10 to the of both sides. 10 to the and log cancel out. We get that 10 to the 1.03 which is 10.7 equals the ratio of conjugate weak base to weak acid. And I would suggest that the best buffers at buffering both strong acid and strong base are going to have a, a ratio equal to one. So this is way off. So the next question we ask is why is this the ratio? And the answer is that the principal challenge or the principal reaction that this can go through is from stomach acid. And stomach acid is essentially hydrochloric acid, a strong acid. So this buffer needs to have a lot more conjugate weak base to react this strong acid away. So larger amount of conjugate weak base can react away any HCl, or a lot of HCl. While keeping the buffer relatively strong and intact. Now, now let's talk about preparing a buffer with a given pH. In particular, this one's going to be 500 milliliters of a buffer with a pH of 9.10 and um, a total concentration of 0 0.100 molarity. So you're going to choose your pH, uh, choose your weak acid to be as close as possible to your desired pH. And we're going to choose ammonium, ammonia as our weak acid and conjugate weak base. If you look that up, you'll see that uh, ammonium 
as a Ka, let's start there, of 5.68, I believe, times 10 to the minus 10, which gives it a pKa equal to 5.68 exponent 10 minus log 9.25, which is pretty close to 9.10, though not exactly the same. It's a little more. So uh, our buffer, let's see, pK is higher than pH. Um, yeah, so we'll have to account for that. So we've chosen our system. That was step one. Step two, calculate the total moles of weak acid and conjugate weak base. Anytime you think you've got a buffer, you're using the henderson hassel balch equation. And this time, I guess we will do moles because um, our, oh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So that's the henderson hassel balch uh, We need to calculate the total moles of weak acid and conjugate weak base. So uh, we have to start with our 0 0.500 molarity, no, liters of buffer with a total concentration of 0 0.100 moles per liter. Because this is going to give us the total moles if we multiply that out, 0 0.500 moles is going to be the total moles, which is going to be the moles of conjugate weak base, plus moles of weak acid. That's how we're going to design this buffer anyway, since its total concentration is going to be 0 0.1. That's going to be the total concentration of the weak acid and the conjugate weak base. So if we now call X our moles of weak acid, then moles of weak base, conjugate weak base, with 0 0.0500 minus X. And we can now plug this into our henderson hasselbalch equation down here. We know that we've got a 9.10 for a desired pH. We know that we have a 9.25 for a pKa. For our conjugate weak base moles, we've got 0 0.0500 minus X. And our weak acid moles are just going to be X. So now, similar to what we did on the last slide, let's now subtract 9.25 from both sides. End up with minus 0 0.15 equals log of 0 0.0500 minus X over X. And then we can 10 to the both sides, 10 to the, 10 to the, um, that's a 10 to the, there we go. Hard to see, sorry about that. Um, but then we can do 10 to the 0.15 minus, I get 0 0.708. And 10 to the and log cancel each other, which leaves me with eek that equal to uh, 0 0.0500 minus x over x. Now, cross multiplying here, I get 0 0.708x equals 0 0.0500 minus x. Take the x over to the other side, I get 1.708x equals 0 0.0500, and x equals. 0 0.0500 divided by 1.708, 0 0.0293. And that's going to be my moles of weak acid, which is ammonium. Get up there, Bill. Little Bill. Um, and that means that my moles of weak base will be that minus 0 0.05, 0 0.0207. And those will be my moles of ammonia. And so with this, what I want to impress upon you is that you can design a buffer 
to be at the pH that you want. You always want to choose a buffer, and a, a meaning a weak acid, in which the pKa is within one unit and really as close as possible to the desired pH so that your buffer will be able to withstand weak acid and, or sorry, strong acid and strong base attacks. And that's how you design a buffer.